Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out another episode of Kenny's Record Collection. Uh, today's episode is a special one for me. Um, I'm going to be showing off my Beastie Boys collection. I was just talking with a friend of mine uh, about the Beastie Boys this morning, reminiscing about just how great they were and uh, just the influence that they've had on our lives. So uh, I thought, hey, why not show off my collection today in this video? All right, so I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to start out with their first ever release. This is the Polywog Stew EP, uh, released in 82 or 80, 1982 on Rat Cage Records. Small independent label based out of New York City. Uh, BC Boys were just young upstarts here. They really didn't even have their stuff together. Um, they recorded this seven inch after being together for only a little while. Um, recorded at 171A Studio, historical spot. Here's the record. That was MCA's dog. I forgot the dog's name, but uh, they later used that uh, picture on the Some Old Bullshit album, which was like a re-release of a lot of their, uh, the original Cookie Puss album and the Polywalk Stew EP. So yeah, that's, that's the original right there. Uh, this is a bootleg 12 inch. It's got basically the same songs, but it's got some live tracks from CBs on the B side. Pretty cool. This is a bootleg though, I mean, whatever. This is pretty cool. This is called Speed Trials. This was a compilation um, from a small show. Um, it was at a spot called The White Columns. Um, it was just a bunch of different bands playing, New York bands and uh, you know, you had the BC Boys, Swans, Sonic Youth, Lydia Lunch, The Fall. Um, there's a cool live version of Egg Raid on Mojo on here which until I found this just out in the wild, I didn't know this existed, but it's a cool recording of uh, Egg Raid on Mojo from 1983. Pretty cool. Then I'm gonna jump ahead. I don't have Cookie Puss. Um, as a kid, I had, I think the cassette, but I, I never got the record. Um, here's an original license to ill on Def Jam. Pretty cool. I mean, everybody knows. Everybody knows this record. You got the cool gatefold picture at uh, Flushing Meadows Park in Queens. Um, pretty sick. Oh, it goes the other way. Um, on the tail wing there, it says uh, three whatever. That's actually, if you hold it up to a mirror, it says, eat me. Pretty silly. I mean, you know, they were just silly, silly kids. It's, I have the insert. It's thrashed. But still really cool to see. I love this. This album was a huge, one of the first uh, albums I ever got. This isn't my, like, original. I had this on cassette as a kid. I didn't have the record until a few years later. Uh, here's a couple of 45s from that album. Um, this is Fight for Your Right, and I think the B-side is, yeah, Paul Revere. Cool, though, it's got the little Def Jam sleeve. Here's another Fight for Your Right, 7-inch. This is like a Spanish version. It says it's supposed to have time to get ill on the B-side, but this record... got five for your right and then the back has nothing that's how it was released I have no idea why this it's just a complete blank seven inch it's not rare that I know of um, it's pretty weird though <laughs> 
All right, this this is something I don't love too much. Um, this is like a 1998 re-release of the album. You know, this is when re-releases were just kind of starting out. You know, start not just starting out. I mean, there was always re-releases, but this is like unsanctioned by the band. Uh, you know, Def Jam just took their masters and the Beastie Boys couldn't do anything about it. And, you know, the the record itself isn't such a great pressing. And, you know, this is like a shitty scan of the original sleeve. It's like, you know, they, they could have done a much better job, but, you know, they would just... Nothing special, you know. If everybody knows the story about Def Jam and the Beastie Boys, uh, it didn't end well, and the Beastie Boys never got paid by Def Jam. Uh, this is a 12-inch Paul Revere and the new style. Um... Pretty cool. I mean, I, I should have a lot more of their original 12 inches, but I don't. Uh, my friend Adam has the lock on all those. Uh, his Hold It Now Hit It. And the B side. Uh, oh, it's all Hold It Now Hit It. It's a full Hold It Now Hit It 12 inch. It's got just uh, instrumentals. All right, now we're gonna. This is this is a fun one because it's got a stupid story behind it. This Paul's Boutique original pressing. You see, it's in this white sleeve. Funny story. If if anybody remembers Bleak of Bob's in Manhattan, I used to go there as a kid. And you know, he he was known to have some interesting tactics. So when I bought this. It was in that white sleeve. He told me that it was a promo. So I was like, all right, I'll buy it. It's cool. You know, I was looking for the actual full eight panel sleeve that Paul's Boutique came out in. But he's like, yeah, you know, this is a promo copy. Pretty cool. I was like, all right, let me get it. Turns out... <laughs> It's not a promo. It's it's just the original record without the real sleeve, the eight-panel sleeve. I'm still on the hunt for the eight-panel sleeve, the original. If anybody has one with no record, hit me up. You know, we'll trade or something like that. All right, here's the, uh, the Grand Royal re-release, uh, 1998 or 99. Uh, they took the album and put it on two discs instead of one because... The original version sounds really bad. So the Beastie Boys knew that. And when they re-released it on Grand Royal, you know, they split it up into two records. And, you know, this is, it's got the full, full eight panel treatment. Let me open it up. Step back. I mean, it's sick. This is the intersection of like Ludlow, Rivington, and... Uh, what the heck? Yeah, Ludlow, Rivington, and one other street. And MCA actually took the photo. He had a sick 360 camera. So if if you set this up the right way, it, it looks unbelievable. And like this is... It says it's Paul's Boutique. There was uh, no Paul's Boutique in Manhattan. It was actually in Brooklyn. Uh... So, but they, they mocked up Lee's Sportswear on Rivington as though it was Paul's Boutique. Uh, this is cool. This is an actual promo. The Hey Ladies promo. I mean, this is just unreal. Uh, the remixes on the back are great. Um, if you haven't heard the remixes, 33% uh, God and Dish Yourself in 89. Just do it. Um... Really good stuff. It it takes actually the Dish Yourself in '89 is in a remix. It's actually West Coast Dr. Dre rhyming 
uh, over something. I can't remember what the significance of it was, but <laughs> cool stuff. This is a bootleg of the Shadrach 12 inch, which I'm gonna get to in a second. I have the Shadrach 12 inch. Um, it's kind of a sought after record, so uh, a company bootlegged it. Nothing special. I would suggest getting the real Shadrach if you can. Um, this is like a 1997 or 98 Grand Royal re-release. You can see the hype sticker there. This 12-inch uh, was kind of hard to find after a while, you know, in the 90s. They weren't making them, and, you know, if you found one, you were lucky. But it says, uh, BC Boys love American style. Out of print for almost a decade. Forgotten gem features a Paul's Boutique Classics. Hey, lady, shake your rump, as well as two rare cuts you won't find anywhere else. Pretty cool. All right, now this, this is great. This is really sought after. Um, this is the Shadrach 12-inch. Uh, you got... A few remixes and then the b-side has a song called uh, your sister's death uh, another version of car thief and then some cop some dumb cop gave me two tickets already they're just crazy um, mixes like that the dust brothers had with all these tracks more like the original versions of the songs before uh, before the BC boys got on capital label Pretty cool. All right, now we're getting in the Check Your Head era. Um, here's the single for Jimmy James. This is cool because it has the original version of Jimmy James on it, which they didn't let them put it on the actual album because of some samples that they couldn't clear. There's uh, a, Hen a Hendrix sample and something else that they didn't clear for the album. They, maybe they cleared it after for the 12-inch. Very cool, like, you know, the Beastie Boys were always just up on the, like, the cool, you know, vibes, like, with the tubes on the back and the, on the on the front cover, like, capturing that 1960s, you know, jazz vibe. Um, this has uh, some cool tracks on the back. Boom and Granny, which is an ode to the older ladies. They even mention, like, B. Arthur and, you know. Another song, Drinking Wine. That's a strange, like, it's almost like backwards uh, samples and weird, you know, it's just like trippy. If you messed up on something, you, you'll enjoy it more. Yeah, that's that one. Uh, here's the Pass the Mic 12 inch, which I love. I mean, it's, it's got some great mixes of the beats from Pass the Mic. Really good stuff. Uh, this also has like an unreleased uh, one of the hardcore songs. It's it's I, I'm pretty. It doesn't even have any like mention of it on the sleeve or anything. But uh, it's like the Big Mac, you know, uh, two all beef patties, whatever. There's like a hardcore version of that song on here. It's a live track. I'm not 100% sure if it's even the Beastie Boys. It could be somebody else. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments, please. It's just something I never knew about. Um, this is a weird one. I never even opened it. It's the Professor Booty 12-inch. I kept it sealed. It's just the album version um, on both sides. I don't know why they released this as a 12-inch. I mean, they never really put out an official single of it or a video maybe they were going to I mean there's no artwork for it or anything like that I still need the gratitude record uh, on 12 inch if anybody has one they want to sell me please hit me up um, here's my so what you want there's another great record just it's it's almost stands on its own because of all the great mixes um, it's got a live version of Groove Holmes on it with Biz Marquee just like talking over them while they're playing. Uh, a live version of So What You Want. Uh, the song Skills to Pay the Bills, which I love. 
That's a great song. Really cool. Oh, and it's got the Soul Assassins remix of So What You Want, you know, with, with Be Real and Send Dog. They have a, a verse on it. Really good. Um, this is really awesome. Ill Communication, original. This is cool because green vinyl. I love it. I, I bought this recently from my friend's store in uh, Red Hook, Brooklyn. It's called 360 Record Shop. My man Benny, shout out to him. Hope he's doing good. Haven't been over there in a while. But yeah, this is really great stuff. All right, next, Get It Together 12 Inch. That's the track they do a Q-tip from uh, Tribe Called Quest. It's got a lot of remixes, and it's also got a couple of uh, songs that you've probably never heard. Uh, There's a song called Resolution Time, which is sick, and another one, Dope Little Song. You know, if you're a BC Boys fan, these are, these are some tracks you should check out. Um, Anybody remembers Caesar's Bay Bazaar in Brooklyn, uh, off Bay Parkway? I bought this there. I, I remember it vividly. There was a little record, you know, record store in there, and, and it's like a flea market. Um, in between, between um, ill communication and hello nasty, BC Boys did a little. Uh, Revival of, of like being a hardcore band They did a little tour And they called themselves Quasar on the little tour They, they played some small clubs Like they played Coney Island High in Manhattan uh, They played some small like frat party type places There's some footage of it on YouTube Which is really cool So this is like their you know Second wave of hardcore That they did in the mid 90's Pretty cool, you know. This is on Grand Royal. Records kind of beat up, but uh, you know, very like you know DIY. They're trying to go for that vibe again. You know, they're taking a break from all the major label hype that they were in. Um, this is from the Hello Nasty album. I, I don't have Hello Nasty. I should, but I don't. I mean, I had the cassette. Way back when. Uh, this has some cool remixes of uh, Negotiation Limerick File, Intergalactic, Body Moving. And it's got a couple versions of three MCs and one DJ. And a song called Putting Shame in Your Game. Pretty cool. Um, this next one is pretty crappy. I found this, believe it or not. If anybody knows me, I, I've I find records everywhere. I didn't pay a cent for this. I came up on it. Um, this is just a compilation of theirs, which I don't need, but I have it because I found it. Um, pretty cool early photos. I mean, they look so corny there. Thank God they didn't stay with that that look. I mean, they I don't know. <laughs> That was all Rick Rubin's idea, supposedly. Getting those tracksuits and they were just faking the funk. Like appropriating the culture. I don't know. It, thankfully, they, they changed it up after that. But um, I got one more, which isn't technically a Beastie Boys record. Uh, this is BS2000. Uh, this is Ad Rock's like, side project. It was all beats that he made. And different little like sample heavy stuff and not really the greatest, you know, record, but you know, it's got all the uh all the discs that he, he put all the music on. If you anybody remember those, like what are they called? Three and a half inch floppy or something like that. I don't know. I was not a computer person, especially back then, but this is like late nineties. BS two thousand. So yeah, that wraps it up. Uh, anybody else love the Beastie Boys like I do? I mean, leave me a comment. 
let me know what you have if you have any rare BC boys um, you know I love talking about this stuff so if you can subscribe to my channel uh, check out some of my other videos uh, I have a couple other collection videos up so check those out and uh, I'll talk to you soon have a good weekend